ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo staying off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1100 ladder. I really do appreciate all of the support. Bit of a different video today. I want to do some combos and explanations of how to properly play purely, at least through my perspective. You know, I'm not a Jesse Cotton, obviously, or something like that, right? I'm not a pack TCG. Um, but... This deck, I feel, is very complicated to play. Uh, it's definitely a very good deck, but you need to know what you're doing. And I figured that this would be a great way to show people how to play the deck and also how to properly counter the deck uh, and how best to beat it. So if you're someone who, you know, struggles with things like that, sorry, I'm trying to get the mat here straight. If uh, you're someone who struggles with things like that, uh, you know, we're going to be taking it slow and steady because that is what wins the race. As um, we go through together how to properly play out purely hands, what are some combos, because the thing is with purely, you don't have necessarily one card or two card combos, you have little combo lines that you should know about, like activating your quick play spells in the draw or standby phase. But there's nothing like, you know, for example, summon Alubar, go for branded fusion, play branded fusion, and, you know, build a board from there. It all depends on how your opening hand looks. And that's very similar to decks like Pendulum Magicians, where you don't necessarily have straight normal combo lines. It kind of more depends on just how you open, how your board is going to look, how your end board is going to look, I should say. So if that interests you, then be sure to like this video, save this video to your watch later and your favorites so that it guarantees you that it will save your spot in case you need to stop watching the video and come back. I know it's supposed to work if you just save it to your watch later, but for me, it doesn't always work. So I usually save it to both my favorites and my watch later just to be on the safe side. So with that out of the way, let's just go on into this here and uh, don't worry, th this deck list like isn't something I'm keeping from everybody just to hopefully like, you know, get the jump on somebody because I don't even have a regional until June. Um, so, you know, the, uh, literally all this is is basically the same build that I showed off in my deck profile from like a couple weeks ago. I just swapped out the Rainbow Bridge package for the fucking Dark World package because it's actually more consistent in my opinion. So, honestly, just copy the uh, Idaho regional list, and that's my list. So, let's see. Three, four, five. This is going to be a bit difficult because I'm going to have to put the cards upside down here. So, okay. So, this is actually not a bad hand. So, preferably, you would want to open up like something like Snow so that you can go through all three of your Snow and then get to the Brow. Um, but this hand isn't terrible. I mean, you can't activate either of these in your draw or standby phase. You're forced to go into main phase and possibly get drolled. That's another reason, too, that you want to play your quick plays in the draw or standby phase, because then that way you can't get drolled, and you're able to at least get a couple searches before you're able to get drolled. Uh, so let's see here. If I was playing out this hand, uh, I would go ahead and, uh, well, I wouldn't even set the delicious memory. I would actually just set the talents face down, uh, and then from there, I would activate the happy memory uh, be sure that whenever you activate these quick play spells, something else I should mention here, um, they do everything on resolution. So at the initial activation, that's when the opponent has to ash. So for example, Happy Memory says target a card on the field until the end of the next turn. It can't be destroyed by card effects. If the opponent asks you for a target, then they're cheating you because this doesn't target, un well, this doesn't even make the target until resolution. It doesn't even target, to be honest, because it just says choose, I think. Yeah, it says choose one card. This thing doesn't even fucking target. That's hilarious. Um, so yeah, just the initial activation, they have to ash. So in this case, I'm setting this because then I can have a, tar a card to target that can't be destroyed by card effects. So if they don't ash me or nothing, then cool, great. We're going to use the effect to go ahead and target our face down uh, triple tactics talent that we set. And in this case, we're just assuming that they haven't hand trapped me yet, right? And this is where we kind of get into semantics, but kind of not really, because if they do hand trap you or don't hand trap you, kind of depends on how you play. I personally like to go for the original purely first, usually, because if there's anything I want them to hand trap, I want it to be the the light attribute EV. Um, because Lily, this one, is a hard once per turn. And if this gets hit with Valor, Ash, whatever, you're kind of in a rough spot because you need to get to that leap to guarantee your Noir, or if you already have the Noir because you have enough quick play spells in your hand, then you want to go for my friend purely or for the straight purely street. So with us having Delicious Memory in hand, I'm going to go ahead and go for purely, and that's just because of the fact that 
Uh, Delicious Memory guarantees us plump, so we're able to recycle spells from our graveyard, which can most likely get us to five materials. And on top of that, too, if they're going to negate this, I'm going to be like, okay, thank you. I have another quick play spell, so now I can just get out Lily and then copy it from my grave, and you lose no advantage. Um, so we do have to discard a card for uh, the Happy Memory. We shouldn't forget about that. Um, so we'll go ahead and discard the Brow. We're going to get out the Purely. Something that you should keep in mind, too, if you are playing the Dark World package, the Dark World monsters are trigger effects, so they are always going to be on a chain link one. So don't try and cheat somebody, or don't let someone cheat you, because you know that there's assholes out there, uh, who will try and chain block their searches with their purelies with the Dark Worlds. You can't do that with the Dark Worlds. Both Snow and Brow are trigger effects. They are going to be on chain link one uh, immediately... Uh, once the the chain from the happy memory resolves after you resolve the effect. So Growl is going to be chain link one, and then the purely is going to be chain link two. Assume that they don't hand trap you or nothing. If they do, fine, they're an idiot because we've got another spell locked in, ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and excavate the top three cards, and this is what I mean. <laughs> this is fucking disgusting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I mean by gold fishing and testing hands because you know obviously you see me shuffling here so I can't control what it spells or traps that I'm, I'm milling or excavating right so in this case we hit leap so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and take the leap and the reason for this is because I already have another spell in my hand uh, so I know for a fact I'm gonna be getting to Lily um, and Leap, as I said, guarantees that we get Noir. So that opens me to go for either my friend or for Straight Purely Street to give me a spell at the end of the turn. Um, and then the Chain Resolve, so Brow is going to draw us a card, and that gets us to Ash. Cool, so now the opponent's going to have to deal with an Ash uh, on the next turn, or if they try and, like, I don't know, Gamma us or something. Which, again, even if they hand trap us, we have the talent set, so it's, it's kind of whatever. So let's see. Now we're back in an open game state. Uh, not exactly the best hand in the world, because I don't really want to ditch anything. Um, but I think in this case, I'm going to go ahead and set the leap face down. Uh, and I definitely want to activate the delicious memory. So we're going to go delicious memory, targeting the purely so that it can't be destroyed by battle. And then we kind of have to make a decision here, depending on our matchup, if we want to hit the ash or the Droll, and I think honestly, I'm just going to go for ash, just because the fact that Droll is so disgusting this format. Now, if they did hit us with like an Ash or something on the Pure Lead, then obviously we wouldn't have the Leap and we could activate the Talents to like rip a card out of their hand or something. Um, you know, it's it's kind of semantics, but it just, it's it's inside the mind of what I'm thinking as I'm playing out this hand, if that makes any sense. Um, so we ditched the Ash, so now we're going to activate Lily. We already have the Leap set face down. I'm going to go ahead and leave this face up so that y'all don't forget about that. And we're sitting with Droll in hand. We've got talents. So I'm going to go ahead and go for, yeah, I'm going to go for straight purely street because that's going to get us to sleepy and we're going to be just rolling in all the draws. We're going to go ahead and activate the straight purely street. Um, that's right. This, this is this is set on the board. I'm used to having my shit set. <laughs> um, cool. So then we're going to go Lily Effect, target the delicious. If they hand trap us here, cool. We're probably still winning the ball game, or at least setting up a disgusting field. Uh, we'll go ahead and make the plump, and then plump's effect as a quick effect. So keep that in mind. If like they try and veil you or something, you can still go quick effect to attach, you know, spells and traps from the grave. Um, so we only have one spell or trap in the grave. So we're gonna go ahead and attach the happy memory. So now we have three materials on the plump. We're sitting on a droll, and then if for whatever reason they hand trap us, we can go talents. And if we did play the talents, then this is just another spell that we can attach to the plump. So keep that in mind. Uh, so with three materials on the purely plump, uh, not exactly the best board in the world, but we are guaranteed a noir because we hit the leap off the excavation. So we go ahead and end turn. The effect of straight purely street is going to activate, giving us a fourth material on the plump. That's going to go ahead and get us to purely sleepy memory so that we can draw a card at the start of the opponent's standby phase. So now we've got four materials on the plump, so now we can drop out a five material noir, which is really disgusting. Um, this is still set on our board. The leap is also set on the board. Uh, we're going to pass turn. The opponent's going to draw for turn. We're going to go standby phase and assume that the opponent doesn't have something toxic to interact with us. Uh, we're going to go plump in the standby, activating the effect of Sleepy Memory to draw a card. We're going to chain the leap. This is how you get all the extra draws. So we're going to chain the leap. Uh, we're going to target the plump. And then the chain's going to resolve. This is going to become a five mat noir. Play that out. We're going to draw a card. We draw into Pretty Memory. That's not bad. Uh, and then when that resolves, we're going to use Noir with the Sleepy Memory to draw yet another card. So that's going to hit us Happy Memory. 
uh, and then the talents in the back row is just kind of whatever. So you have a multiple bounce in the form of Noir, and you have the Droll, which is really disgusting. So if you're playing in the Mirror Match, you're pretty much going to shut the Mirror Match down. The Noir can't be targeted because it was summoned this turn, so straight purely streets protecting it, if for whatever reason you go through all the materials. Um, and yeah, if the opponent's playing even like Branded, and they go like, I don't know, uh, summon Alubar, get Branded Fusion, cool, Droll. Um, or Super Heavy Samurai, they go to Surge. Cool, Droll. Like, Droll, honestly, th th this Droll in our opening hand has saved us a lot in building our board. So, that's just one example. Let's go ahead and dive into the next one. And we are just going to give this a couple good shuffles. I want to at least show that I'm shuffling on camera and I'm not just stacking the deck. Alright, boop -a doop -a doop Get a few good shuffles in here. This deck, this deck operates like Sky Strikers, in case you haven't been able to tell. Uh, it operates a whole lot like Sky Striker, which kind of makes it fun in that regard. Definitely takes a lot of brain power. This this is definitely not something where you can just turn off your brain and kind of just let the let the job do itself. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Stealth Bird is my proxy for Brow, uh, I, or not Brow for Snow. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, no, it's, we're we're not playing no Stealth Bird. This this is Snow. So nothing that we can do in draw or standby because Delicious Memory requires a monster on the field. And honestly, this hand is what we would call on the channel booty booty butt cheeks. The Ash is cute, I guess. The problem is, is that you have to commit to a brow or a snow. Um, and if they Ash you, you're just fucked. Like, there, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, you could maybe set the delicious memory and pass and then target one of their monsters and not have it be destroyed by battle and then ditch snow to summon out a purely to search but like they're probably going to otk you at that point because just hitting them with an ash blossom against a meta deck unless it's something that's rogue is probably not going to do you all that good uh so we're just going to consider this a dud and we're just going to move on to uh the the next hand because i mean like if the opponent doesn't open up a hand trap like if they open up anything ash droll fucking gamma like you just lose um and like that's just sort of the sad reality with this deck i mean with any deck really i mean you're sometimes just going to get bricks um yeah i mean it is what it is i would still rather open up the dark gold package instead of the rainbow bridges salvation package because the rainbow bridges salvation is just once per duel so at least with this we've got an ash but i mean if they've got any hand trap they could fart on this hand and we would just you know, lose the game and have to go to the next game. So I'm glad that we got this on camera though, because I mean, it goes to show how this deck can occasionally brick. Sometimes it's good to ash the spell activation and sometimes it's not. It all depends on how well they opened. All right, let's try this again. Let's see, we got Snow, our proxy. <laughs> Purely Leap, Happy Memory, Delicious Memory, and Ash. So this actually isn't bad at all. Still, again, not anything that you can do in your drawer standby. If you open up something like Pretty Memory or Sleepy Memory, then in the drawer standby phase, you can instantly activate it. And if they've got like an Ash or something, then okay, they, they have it. But this is actually really disgusting. You can set the trap uh, basically as bait um, for you know activating Happy Memory to protect it from destruction. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. So we're gonna go ahead and activate Happy Memory. We're just gonna assume that they don't got no hand traps. Like even if they hand trap us, then it's like, okay, cool. Like you have to commit to the snow and like activate delicious memory on that, which I mean, if you have to, then you have to, it is what it is. Uh, we'll activate Happy Memory targeting uh, the actual set leap. I'm just leaving it face up so that y'all remember what it is. Uh, so we'll activate Happy Memory, target that. Ditching the snow, and this is why I love the Dark World package, because now we're gonna have a constant fodder of monsters that we can ditch and not feel like we have to ditch our hand traps and stuff. Uh, so we are going to go here, since I want to bait out hand traps and I've already got delicious memory in hand, I'm going to go ahead and go for purely here. Um, with this being my first activation, if they don't ash the happy memory or anything, if they Valor this, I would rather them hand trap this all day because it's a soft once per turn. Like I said, with the Lily, you need that Lily to go the fuck through uh, or else you might be having a hard, bad time depending on how good or how bad you open. Uh, so we ditch that, we summon the snow, is going to be chain link 1, because remember it's a trigger effect. Then we're going to go purely chain link 2, so we're going to excavate the top 3, hopefully hit a purely speller trap, add it to our hand, and then the snow is going to get us another copy of snow. Now you're probably thinking, well Avery, why not go for brow, because then once you ditch it, you draw a card. I want to deck thin as much as possible, so I want to go through my 3 snows first before I add the brow to draw a card. Sleepy, that's hot. Delicious, that's hot. Lily, that is whatever. Uh, we've already got Delicious, so we're going to go ahead and add Sleepy to guarantee us that we're going to get a draw at the end of the turn. And then the Snow, aka Stealth Bird, which is proxy for Snow, is going to get us another Snow. And shuffle it up here, all the fun things. I do have one Snow and one Brow in here, I just haven't hit them yet. 
uh, let's see. Okay, this is this is where things start getting disgusting because now we're just going to be able to cycle through all of our uh, snows and get to our brow. Um, so we will go ahead and activate Delicious Memory. I'm not making Plump here because I want to get my spells in the gray first um, and then use Plump to the, to the best of its ability. Instead of just attaching the one spell, I can uh, make it with Lily and then be able to attach multiple spells. So we'll go and use Delicious Target, the Purely. Um, yeah. I mean, we could use it and equip it from hand, but again, we're not getting the maximum value. I re would rather use Delicious Memory to ditch uh, the snow to summon out Lily. See if I can bait out any sort of other hand traps, like maybe they Valor this, uh, and then I can kind of make different plays from there. So then the snow is going to be Chainlink 1, the Lily is going to be Chainlink 2. We already have Purely Leap, uh, and we've got two spells engraved. We've got the Delicious and the Happy. So if I use Lily to attach the Delicious, which is what we'll do, that'll be a two mat plump. Plump will trigger to get the Happy from Grave. That's three materials. The Sleepy would be four, getting us to a, another Purely, which is summon number four. You wanna make sure that you're playing around Nibiru. Unless you have um, purely straight Purely Street, the field spell, or my friend Purely established. Preferably if you have both. If you have both of you don't give a fuck about Nibiru because you're just gonna rebuild your board and get your spells back. Um, if you just have my friend, depending on what your hand is, you can kind of maybe not care about Nibiru. With this particular hand, I don't give a rat's ass about Nibiru, whether I get straight purely street or my friend purely. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go for my friend purely because I want the plus. And if they, if I were to get nibbed in this scenario, I could still get all three of my spells back. We've got exactly three, the two engraved and then the one in hand, each with a different name. So we'll do that. The snow is going to get us our actual copy of snow that we have in our deck. <laughs> Waiting for the others to come in the mail. Uh, open game state, so we're going to go ahead and activate the My Friend Purely, who is looking adorable AF. Uh, we'll go ahead and activate the effect to pay 500 life points. If they want to ogre us, sure. Like, you should have used your hand traps earlier, Sugar Boo Bear. Uh, so we have to reveal three, either three with the same name or three with different names. We already have uh, Delicious and Sleepy, so we're really in the driver's seat here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and go for more Sleepies. So we're going to do Sleepy, Sleepy, and... Why not? We're going to do Pretty Memory because I'm feeling adorable today. So, we're going to go ahead and shuffle these up here. Leave a like right now and that can decide which one we end up hitting. Just kind of shuffle these up here. Let's see. One subscriber, two subscriber, three subscriber, four. We hit the Pretty Memory. That <laughs> That's a damn shame. I wanted to get more draws off of the sleepy memory. Now, if I did hit more sleepy memories, obviously then we could do the whole standby fish shenanigan like you saw in the first example to draw us multiple cards. Um, but pretty memory's fine. It's another different name, which is, it's not the worst thing in the world. If anything, we can make beauty with the purely because we can copy it from the hand. But we'll go ahead and activate the lily. We're going to target the delicious memory. Uh, keep in mind that you can DD Crow the delicious memory and then I'm gonna be crying and shit in my pants because now I don't have access to my plump. So DD Crow is uh, a fairly decent move uh, to be making at this point. Uh, we have the plump, and we only have one spell engraved, assuming that the opponent hasn't tried to like imprim us, which I don't know why they'd be waiting till now to imprim us. But we'll go ahead and use the plump to attach the happy memory, because that makes us happy, boys and girls. And this is what I mean. I mean, we've got pretty snow and ash and sleepy. I mean, now at this point, I could go sleepy, attach it to the plump, ditch the snow, which would get me to brow. I can summon out as what? Summon number one, two, three. The purely would be summon number four. And then we could also get Ensemble Robin. So let's go ahead and play that out here. I'm going to activate the Sleepy. Uh, we're going to chain the Plump's effect, which is three times a turn because that's not broken at all. Attach uh, as a material. So now the next Valor effect damage I take this turn is reduced to zero. That's irrelevant uh, unless you're going to set the sleepy memory and then activate that in the draw phase to insulate yourself from the first set of damage if you're afraid of getting no decay. We'll go ahead and ditch the snow. Do -do 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 -do. That's going to be getting us to that at some point. Well, actually, i got to wait to do that because um, we're going to be summoning out purely. So we got to shuffle our deck and then activate three. So we'll go for purely. Uh, and then new chain, snow, chain like one because remember it's a trigger effect. Purely is going to be chain link two. That's going to get us an excavate of three, which if it gets us to a sleepy memory, oh, ladies and gentlemen, we, we might as well just win the ball game right there. Two, yo, <laughs> yo, cool. So we get the sleepy memory in hand because uh, these two we already have access to and it really doesn't matter at this point. And then we'll go ahead and grab the brow 
and we already have a pretty memory in hand. Um, so we, we, we just have all of the pluses. The brow gives us an extra draw. So far, we're going to be drawing four cards, plus off of the brow, if we ditch it this turn, is going to be five. Um, and we're only on four summons, so they still can't nip us, um, which they're not going to, because, I mean, I've already got, what, five materials on this? No, we have a four mat uh, plump, which is fine. We can get it to five, because we have another sleepy memory. Um, and let's see. With my friend purely up, we don't necessarily care about Nibiru. For example's case, I'm not going to go for the third purely. Um, I mean, we could be greedy here and go for it. Um, why not? Let's just, let's see where this goes. For example's case, don't do this. Um, I will say that. Don't don't get too greedy. Know, know when to hold your, your cards. Um, but for this example's case, since we have Brow, I mean, let's, let's just go ahead and see what happens here. So we're going to go Sleepy. We're going to chain the Plump for the second time this turn, attaching another Sleepy Memory. So we're going to be drawing two cards in the standby phase. Um, and then we'll ditch the Brow. And we're going to get our last copy of Purely. Now, let's say, um, also, Brow's going to be chain like one, obviously. Purely chain like two to activate the top three. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, that we activate the effect of Purely and the opponent nibs us here. If they did, we would be able to get three spells from Grave with different names to our hand. All three of our Purely's would be gone. Um, we would have to go for Lily, which we've already used this turn. Which is why I was saying, like, don't do this play. Like, if I was in an actual tournament, like a regional or something, I wouldn't do this. Because if I got nibbed, like, it would be kind of bad news bears because all three of my fucking purelies are in the grave. And, like, I pretty much lose all my gas at that point. Like, if I was in an actual tournament setting, I, I would just set the sleepy. Uh, or, I'm sorry, I would activate the sleepy. Or, or no, I wouldn't have. What, what the fuck am I thinking? I would set the sleepy. Uh, set, I would, uh, shit, honestly, I would make... I would maybe just use Purely's effect to make the beauty and pass, and then when the opponent draws, use the plump to draw two with two sleepies, and then use leap to make the noir, and then draw two more. So for this example's case, we're just going to go ahead and pop off and show you what the deck is really capable of. Uh, so we expect three, we don't hit anything, that's fine. The brow is still going to get us a draw of one. Uh, so we hit Lily for next turn, that's hot. Um, we've got over five materials on this plump. I'm going to wait though because I have the leap, uh, and I'll go ahead and activate this Purely to target the pretty memory. So that's gonna give us access to at Purely Beauty, which is basically a uh, quick effect uh, effect veiler. Uh, and then we're sitting on Ash. Uh, so then then these two, you could slam all three into Unsobble uh, Robin to have it be a three times bounce, but I wanna have the, the diversity with the, the beauty and just you know have the negate be there. Uh, we're just gonna say that this is Lyralusic Ensemble Robin because it hasn't come in the mail for me yet. Um, and then we're going to pass turn, uh, so then the opponent's going to draw, uh, they're going to go to standby, standby phase, we're going to use beauty's effect, because we've got two sleepy memories under it, to draw a card, that's going to resolve, we're going to activate the purely again on a new chain, and then we're going to chain the purely leap, targeting the plum, so that's going to resolve, this is going to be like, a, what, a six mat noir, that's going to draw us two cards, so then we're going to draw again off that second sleepy memory, now that's going to resolve, and we're still going to be in the standby phase. Noir is going to activate, drawing us one card from the sleeping memory. That's going to resolve, and then we're going to use the effect again to draw another card. We have just drawn four spells, three of which were quick plays, and then the one straight purely street, and we have an ash, and we have a two times bounce with ensemble, and we have a qu uh, quick effect effect veiler negate, and we've got a shit ton of bounces with the Noir. Yeah, they're not building a board pimp. <laughs> And if they somehow, like, if they've got lava or something, that's fine, because Purely Leap can just bounce three of our Purely monsters, exceed or affect whatever, back into the deck, and then we shuffle. So we just get our gas back. And because we have my friend Purely up, let's say they Santa Claus the Noir, cool, I get three of my quick plays of different names back to my hand to make this hand size even bigger. <laughs> so... Would I necessarily make this play again? No, because I would want to play around Nib, because every time I play fucking Yu-Gi-Oh, someone has to have a Nib up their ass. Like, everybody's going to have Nib. If you're playing Nibiru, you're going to draw it every time against me. I play to play around the Nibiru. I don't care, unless you have, like, no hand, obviously, uh, or if I know what your hand is. So, 
This is actually really a perfect example of what the deck can really be capable of. The ensemble, Robin, double bounce, and all that. Like this, this is how the deck really shines, ladies and gentlemen, when you are able to pop off. So let me know if this was helpful to you. Um, obviously, for a board like this, Droll would be very good. You should be playing Droll. This is why you should be playing Droll, or else I wouldn't get any of this. Um, I've actually had players on EDO Pro when I've been playtesting. Uh, they'll see me drawing cards with Sleepy Memory, and then they'll Droll me, and I'm like, okay, you can't search either. And that's something that you need to remember when playing Droll. If you play it, it says neither player can search cards from main deck to hand. Um, so I've had a lot of players screw themselves over because they're like, oh, I've locked you out. You're searching on my turn. You also played yourself. And it's literally the equivalent of congratulations, you played yourself. So keep that in mind. Don't Droll me if you're going to get hurt by your own fucking Droll. <laughs> so guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Please let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.